So we need a new paradigm. We need to shift into a different uh, way of, of viewing wildlife and wilderness and not view it as a resource and, and make our rules and our reg- regulations around it being a re- resource. This is Defender Radio. I'm Michael Howey, and this is Defender Radio, the podcast for wildlife advocates and animal lovers brought to you by the Fur Bears. We need change in how we view wildlife and the management of species and their homes. Outdated science and traditions need to be updated with current data and effective traditional ecological knowledge. But how do we start? Well, with a paradigm shift. And that's what the Cochrane Research Institute and Cochrane Ecological Institute are hoping to create with their Wilderness, Wildlife, and Human Interaction Symposium. Taking place Saturday, November 2nd at the Cochrane Ranch House in Alberta, this one-day event features speakers including Dr. Gilbert Pru, Bryce Cassavant, Joe Englehart, Leslie Fox, my boss, and others. There will also be a documentary viewing, an artisan market, silent auction, book signings, and more. It's going to be a great day. And to help share more about why the symposium is needed, what visitors can expect to take away, and what inspiring change really means, Defender Radio was joined by Cochrane Ecological Institute spokesperson Lisa Dahlside. The 2019 Wilderness Wildlife and Human Interactional Educational Symposium. Um... The, the, the concept of this is very much about solutions and paradigms. Uh, paradigm shifts, I suppose, is the more appropriate term. So how did we get to the point of having this conference? Why? What led to the conversations that led to the group that led to the conference? Well, the problem really lies in that historically humanity has attempted to manage wilderness and wildlife. Worldwide, we've been doing this, but we manage them mostly for consumption. And in the 20th century, the North American environmental management became more of a function of government and the impacts of managing uh, these wildlife and, and, and wilderness as identifying them as a resource solely for consumptive use has resulted in an internationally acknowledged loss of biodiversity. So we need a new paradigm. We need to shift into a different uh, way of of viewing wildlife and wilderness and not view it as a resource and and make our rules and our reg- regulations around it being a re- resource. Well, and that's that's very apparent across all, I'd say, environmental related topics. Um, you know, specifically I deal with the North American model of wildlife management or wildlife conservation. Um and that I, I have often said the exact same thing is it's based on the theory that we have to consume or we have to take these resources uh, that are animals. And that creates this fundamental flaw from the very beginning of the conversation. Uh, if we perceive wildlife as a an exploitable resource, then we're not going to consider its intrinsic value or its individual value um, or even just that the topic of sentience is still difficult uh, despite all of the research we have. Uh, is that the kind of thing you're hoping to to challenge? Or are you looking for solutions to challenge it? Where are we at sort of on that spectrum of identifying the problem and looking at solutions and implementing solutions? Well, one of the, the main theme of this um, of this year's symposium is elements of ethical coexistence. So our speakers are are uh, going to inspire coexistence. They're going to share different methods or actions that they're involved with that help enhance their connection to wilderness and wildlife. That in in that process of shifting to a new paradigm, um, they're going to touch on society's psychological, spiritual val- values, cultural science, law, recreation, industry, agriculture. All those different things um, will be touched on to sort of so that the audience can really start critically thinking um, in a way where, where in my mind, I'm, th- I'm hoping for transformative inquiry, where they're going to engage in a way that they're going to be thinking about it, and then they can walk away creatively discovering how they, too, can uh, better coexist with wildlife and with, and with wilderness as well. It's certainly uh, uh, something where... 
sometimes you almost and, and I'm trying to think it's, you need reality shattered a bit. Uh, and there's an episode of an old television show where they do that as a gag. But there's it's this concept of there, there's a light bulb moment. And, and I think most of us have one of these throughout our lives on some subject, whether it's why the Leafs haven't won the cup or why, uh, you know, wildlife is looked at the way it is. But you, you just have this this aha moment. And it changes the way you look at a problem. And all of a sudden, solutions start to open up. Uh, and and a lot of that does occur, I think. You're absolutely right. When someone's inspired, when you hear a story to show how it can happen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and some of these solutions, they're not actually new. They're, a lot of them are forgotten. So, for example, we have Joe Inglehart. He's uh, a rancher in southern Alberta. He's, he's uh, west of Longview. Um, ranches on a huge vast of land. And so one of his challenges is that his cattle are, are, are extending in such uh, a large piece of land. How does he make sure that he can coexist with predators? So what he does is he is a range rider program. He's on the land. He's riding a horse alongside his cattle. Uh, he has different camps set up, uh, various Spots and and he's living with the cattle, which then keeps the predators at bay. And he may see wolves come in, but they'll walk amongst the cattle, knowing that there's a man sitting on a horse right there. So they'll just sort of walk by. And um, and he's managed to really um, bring back something that was done, you know, for so long, so long in our history of ranchers, but something that a lot of ranchers have just. Uh, um, you know, stop doing with our with our modern day. So there's there's solutions that we can that we can adapt to our current day living that that are inspired just by the past as well. And the fascinating thing I find about that, uh, and I'm very glad that Joe Englehart will be there speaking. Is um, it, it's one thing for me to sit here again, sort of in you know urban Hamilton, Ontario, and list off the studies that show the practical reality that all of these coexistence methods work and there is solid science that shows you have better mm-hmm. results with coexistence than you do with lethal control that's that's not up for debate in my mind anymore there's more than enough evidence but yeah. it's entirely different to have joe Engelhart, livestock rancher stand there and say this is my experience doing it uh, that's right. And that's yeah. the same, uh, I'd say, too, with, uh, uh, you know, coyotes. Uh, Coyote Watch Canada was just in um, LaSalle, Ontario, a community that's been seeing some conflict. And it goes a long way for Leslie Sampson of Coyote Watch Canada to go there and stand up and say, this is my experience in Niagara and in Oakville and in Hamilton and all of these other communities where these things have been implemented. Uh, it, it is so important to share those stories and that actually hits on something I found very in, uh, not enjoyable. I, I, I like that is included in your solutions of the sort of the abstract of the event um, that speakers are going to touch on society's psychological and spiritual values, our culture, science, law, recreation, industry and agriculture, because it isn't just an agricultural issue. It isn't just a scientific or or recreational issue. It's all of these things working together to create this world we're living in. And all of those things together, I think, do need to be looked at as we try and find solutions. That's right. And like, um, like one with science is often, often not noticed because, you know, if you're a regular person, you might hear about different scientific, scientific outcomes of different research projects and whatnot, but you're not, you know, looking into the methodology mm-hmm. of how that was, um, how that outcome or conclusion came about. And so Gilbert Perot will be talking about, um, about the ethics uh, and wildlife professionalism in um, in standards, wildlife management and research standards, uh, because a lot of a lot of that involves trapping, not kill trapping, but you might be trapping an animal to, you know, do whatever it is that you're doing with them, uh, letting them go, or or different methodologies that are also just not they're not uh, aligned with coexistence, and they aren't aligned with ethics as as mm-hmm. well. So so. Addressing that, I think that will be a really interesting presentation. Yeah, Dr. Pru has uh, spoken uh, on this show about the ethics of wildlife yeah. management, uh, particularly in regards to the use of snares and strychnine poison. 
uh, and pointing out like a as researchers and as managers, um, we can do better. Well, Royal we there, um, but that they don't because why? And it, it's a very interesting, his book is fascinating. It talks about some of that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and I encourage people to look that up. Um, and of course, cruelty. Yes, you can buy it too and get him to sign it at Ooh. the event. <laughs> he will be set up at lunch uh, lunch hour with uh, a table to sign and sell books. Excellent. Yeah, my, my copy mm -hmm. is currently covered in highlighter marks and pencil scratches, which is what I do when I, I get a book for uh, work purposes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and of course, you were going to have Leslie Fox of the Fur Bears, my mm -hmm. boss there, talking about beavers. Yeah, that's right. So we're really excited about that because, uh, well, her focus is it's Canada's eco hero, yep. Castor canadensis. So they are a keystone species and they really like, they provide an ecological service that is often overlooked. People just see, uh, people that are not willing to coexist with beavers look at them as this animal that's transforming the landscape, cutting down all these beautiful trees, but they're forgetting that when they do that, they're creating wetlands, which are vital to clean water. So um, wetlands act as nature's kidneys, filtering and cleaning the water, and who doesn't depend on clean water? And so we, we do want beavers on our landscape, and especially the municipalities are um, you know, labeling them as nuisance, trapping them, killing them. And so, yeah, I'm so proud that, and so excited that we have the fur bears present at this event, so that they can, so that Leslie can really inspire um, and uh, the coexistence techniques that are proven to work. And um, and I'm hoping that members of the municipalities, like some of the the people from the city of of Calgary or town of Cochrane, will attend as well, so that they can they can get some new ideas as well. And I noticed that there is a strong Indigenous presence at this conference. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit about that. Yeah, Francis First Charger has always been at all of our events. Uh, he's a good friend of Ken and Cleo, the, the owners and operators of the Cochrane Ecological Institute. So he comes and he, he starts us off with an opening prayer, and it's, it really grounds us into what what we're the, all gathered there for. And so we, we love that he always comes. Um, but this year, too, we also have uh, Chantelle Stormsong Chagnon, and she is an amazing activist here in the city of Calgary. She's quite well known. She's in the media quite a lot. She's always on a, at a march or, or doing something. She's a very busy woman, so we're really pleased to have her presence um, as well to also help ground us into what it is that that the re the reasons more of those spiritual reasons behind coexistence as well whether people are going to link into it or not i think just through the drumming just just through the prayer it'll it'll bring us into that place it's a a, a lovely contribution to the day um that mm -hmm. i think also provides hopefully some historic perspective as to you know the the way land is managed and taken and so on um, and yeah. you, you have a couple of other speakers that are going to be great. Bryce Cassavant, who I know and have spoken with many times, uh, talking about wildlife law enforcement and accountability. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I don't have, I don't know exactly what all the aspects are that he's going to talk on, but I know it will be fantastic. Yeah. I personally have been focusing a lot of my time into, you know, reading different acts and legislation and, and it's shocking to me how many violations of the law our governments are, are engaged in. So I'm really excited that Bryce is going to um, tie that in in a more academic way so that I can better understand it and the audience can better understand what's actually going on in Canada. It, it is fascinating because you look at, you know, you, you read, for, for me, I spent a lot of time reading about BC Conservation Officer Service, and they say, oh, well, we have to do this because X, Y, Z. And then you look at what the policy is, and it's not that. And, and you try and figure out, like, how are they justifying putting mm -hmm. this over like it just it doesn't make sense it's kind of a round uh round peg square hole situation or square peg round hole what whatever you prefer uh maybe a triangle too and uh bryce does a great job of really giving you that comparison of let's look at what the legislation says let's look at what standard practice is elsewhere and then let's look at what's happening locally or with our government and sometimes mm -hmm. it's really jarring uh how different those things can be 
Um, yeah. So it's a, it's a great opportunity too, I think, because uh, he can talk more about how to ask questions of governments, which is a very valuable tool. Um, very valuable tool. Yeah. Yeah. Very valuable. And uh, Joe Duff, I don't know about Joe Duff, but it's about migration of birds. And I think that's something, especially in the prairies, needs to be talked about right now. Yeah, well, you, you know, Joe is, um, he's the executive director of Wild Aid Canada Society, but his his uh, he's just got a really cool life story. So him him and, um, and uh, Bill Lishman, they uh, conducted the first human-led bird migration um, for, for Canada geese. And there was the Disney film Fly Away Home. Oh yeah, on yeah, their, yeah. On their uh, actions, and then um, and then they further developed um, working with uh, trumpeter swans and sandhill cranes and whooping cranes. And mm-hmm. so Joe is the one who's developed the protocol for the preliminary sandhill crane study and the whooping crane reintroduction program. Um, so he's got some really cool stories. Um, and 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 I just think it'll be. He, I, he's a really funny guy too. I think he's just going to be a really entertaining speaker and and bring sort of. He's going to be our last speaker because we really want to end it on a positive, happy note <laughs> of our uh, <laughs> our audience leaving, feeling that there are some good success stories um, um, coming out of the actions people are taking. <laughs> that laugh was just a little too quick. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, of course, Cleo is going to be speaking, which will be lovely for everyone. Um, and I, I guess the, the final question is how do people get involved? This is Saturday, November 2nd. I'm going to have a link in the show notes, but if people want, or if they don't have access to the show notes right now and they want to look it up, how can they do that? Uh, though they can come to our Facebook page, Cochrane Ecological Institute. Uh, and then if, if they just go Eventbrite, Wilderness, Wildlife, Human Interaction, then the link will come up uh, with the description as well as the schedule of events. And you can, of course, purchase your tickets there. Tickets are $40. We try to keep them uh, in an affordable range for people. And, um, and, and yeah, we hope people come. We've got a few additions this year. We've got, um, like, uh, um, artesian market this year, so uh, we're hoping that that will just draw in some some people, and, and maybe they'll be uh, excited to then go listen to some speakers as well. But you can come and do some Christmas shopping or whatever you're doing, and uh, then there's some food trucks that are also going to have lots of vegan options, awesome. and um, as well as just the information booths, which is which we've always had. So uh, presence from Wolf Awareness talking about that Range Rider program mm-hmm. and. Um, Calgary Wildlife Rehabilitation Society and uh, I think also uh, Fur Bears will have a booth there as well. So lots of different people to engage in and uh, and hopefully inspiring conversation will be the result of the day's event. To get tickets to the symposium, follow the links on this week's show notes or visit C-E-I-N-S-T dot O-R-G. I genuinely hope you're able to attend this event in Alberta because it really does sound inspirational and informative. I also want to give a big shout out to Lisa who got me in during a very busy week and, of course, all of you for listening. Remember, you can follow me on social media at Defender Radio on Facebook and Twitter and at Howie Michael on Instagram to see what I'm up to, find out about upcoming interviews, and see adorable photos of JJ, the Hamilton Hound, whom you heard clicking about off and on during this week's episode. Until next time, I'm Michael Howie for Defender Radio and the Fur Bears, reminding you to be kind and stay informed and stay strong. Stay strong.